at the forefront of currency innovation, the Neocash Radio Podcast. Drop by for the latest cryptocurrency talk. Their audio format means you can stay up to bit date while you're driving. Learn about the future of money today. Neocashradio.com, hey, hey. Random Ridley Ravings. I had a lot of different thoughts lately that don't really connect with each other in any way, so let's start. I noticed there was an article on philly.com about New Hampshire, and it says that the New Hampshire tourism industry is starting to focus on um, uh, New Hampshire's political freedom, the social and economic freedom that you have when you come here. And I'm not just talking about the private tourism industry. The article says, quote, the new tourism campaign New Hampshire rolled out a year ago is working so well, state officials are planning to expand it to other areas, including economic development, unquote. So I guess what they've been doing in their promos is they say something like, live free and do this, and or live free and do that, and that's how they promote their thing. But to me, this could be a pretty big sea change in the way officials are thinking, because what it says is that they are starting to see New Hampshire a little bit the way that you and I see it as liberty activists, as different from the rest of the states because of its freedoms, and acknowledging that those freedoms are a good thing. I plan on putting a link to this article in the video description, so go there to see it. On an unrelated note, I had a thought or two with regard to how we could spice up uh, pork fest speakers or Liberty Forum speakers. We're always looking for a good keynote speaker, and I think Although we've had certainly good speakers, we haven't had very many speakers uh, that have been well-known. We had Ron Paul, we had Peter Schiff, but most of the time we get folks that are just known inside the liberty movement. Generally, it costs a lot to have someone who's well-known, but it may not cost so much to have someone speak whose position is well-known. Their name might not be well-known, but their position would get a lot of attention. For example, a former president of Estonia. Now, I, that's kind of off the cuff my favorite option because you can get them to talk about something that will generate a lot of media attention when they speak to us. They could talk about seceding from an uncontrolled fascist union in a peaceable manner and maintaining pretty good relations with its successor states. Now, it wouldn't have to be the president of Estonia. It wouldn't have to be the person who was president while the secession was taking place. It could be, well, you could bring Milan Kuchin out from Slo uh, Slovenia uh, or any of the presidents of Slovenia that have served since him. Actually, I don't know if he's still alive, but he probably is. He was not that old when secession happened. Uh, you know, and then there are, of course, plenty of other countries around the world that were once part of other countries. If we could get a former president or prime minister of such a country here i don't know that it would really cost that much but it would it would really create a stir i think in the mainstream press it would also focus discussion in an area where we are supposed to be focusing discussion on a winning issue that the authorities don't want talked about i didn't used to think it was an, a winning issue but the american people have changed my mind switching topics again I was over at the State House the other day, and I bumped into Cynthia Chase again. The last time I bumped into her, I ambush interviewed her about the controversies surrounding her anti-free stater comments. Oh, this time I think I just maybe winked at her or something. And we exchanged a few pleasantries. Isn't that awesome? You can actually talk to your enemies in New Hampshire. Though, I'd rather think of her as a friendly opponent. Oh, and did you know that a film has recently come out which vindicates the baby da da? I am the baby Dada. Uh, I did a Ridley rant a while back about how much I hate Mars. <laughs> how much better it would be uh, for humanity, uh, for humans, to live in orbital colonies. How much better life would be in such a place, uh, eventually. Well, I guess the movie Elysium makes the same sort of argument, although I'm not sure Mars is in the film. It presents the reality, the likely reality, that the, 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 the paradise for humans in the future is going to be a relatively simple thing. It's just a matter of putting a large object in space, 
filling it with air, spinning it around at a certain speed, and putting uh, an environment there. I just saw the trailer for the film, and if you look at Elysium, that's pretty much what such a colony would look like. And yes, unless there's something we don't know, such a place would be almost a paradise, as long as it was decently set up and decently run. The movie, of course, portrays a post sort of post-apocalyptic Earth that's existing alongside this paradisical dome in space. Now you look at that dome and that environment and you tell me how that would ever be created on Mars. All right, those are some thoughts that were bumping around in my head. I thought I'd share them. Ridley out. At the forefront of currency innovation, the Neocash Radio Podcast. Drop by for the latest cryptocurrency talk. Their audio format means you can stay up to bit date while you're driving. Learn about the future of the money today. Neocashradio.com. Hey, hey.